All right, we are here at the Attitude Era podcast. Are we okay. doing filming? Yes. Don't worry, we could edit that. But yep, we are here, Attitude Era podcast, and we have the longest reigning WWF light heavyweight champion of all time, Gilbert. What's up, brother? Gilbert. <laughs> now, of course, before that, it was Dwayne Gill. And I wanted to say that before the Gilbert character skyrocketed, I was told during the independent scene, you actually used to imitate other wrestlers. Oh, yeah, I did. I used um, to make fun of all of them. So who would you say were your favorite wrestlers to imitate during that time? Well, uh, I did the Under Faker, <laughs> and I also did Stone Old. Oh, really? Yeah, it was it was funny as all get out. And then I did Gilbert. Yeah. And I was just starting all that stuff when Gilbert took off. <laughs> and I was going to go through the whole roster. <laughs> oh, man. And before the Gilbert character came up, around that time, you were part of the J.O.B. squad. Yes, I was. So everybody that was members into that, how was your relationship with them then and how you were able to get in? I knew every one of them very well from the years of up there job and everything. And I was just lucky enough that Al inducted me in. So that was lucky on my behalf. You know yeah. what I mean? I would say one of your best highlights. And then, of course, you winning the light heavyweight championship. Oh, yeah, that was unreal. So, I mean, how would you describe that night and then just winning it? And you actually got a great pop when you won, too. Oh, yeah. It was it was unbelievable. I mean, I like I say, it was unbelievable. They came out and, you know, won the title for me, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's why when I got out, I was like, what? And I held it up backwards and everything. I didn't know what the heck I was doing with the title. <laughs> and then a little not too soon after that, um, you were actually a surprise opponent, I remember, from Mankind. How was that decided? Because I remember the hype for that. There was a great hype. That, 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 that uh, actually happened just before I got inducted into the job squad. If you remember, the Survivor Series was that Sunday. And the next night, I got inducted into the job squad. Ooh, on Monday, that's right. That is right. On Monday Night Raw. So it was it was in that, that order. Yeah, they brought me in to uh, be the mystery opponent because nobody knew who it was. And to be honest with you, an hour for the match, I was sitting there playing cards with the headbangers and Mick <laughs> come up to me and goes, why ain't you dressed? And I said, for what, Mick? It's a pay-per-view. I don't dress during pay-per-views. He goes, boy, well, they really did keep it a secret. You're the mystery opponent. I was like, oh, really? Oh, oh, okay. I guess I'll get dressed then. Oh, so you, you, even you didn't know you were surprised? No, nope, had no clue until an hour before the match. No, that's usually the best reactions to get out of that. Yeah, that's but. why everything was so, you know, real. <laughs> <laughs> so now when you begin doing the Gilbert gimmick, how did that come across, especially with the entrance? Well, I, uh, I started talking to Paul Bear about me doing the stuff on the Independents when we were doing okay. house shows. And he started laughing and all him and came with Gilbert, Gilbert. <laughs> so uh, one day in catering, you know, they was, had all the guys, Gilbert. Yeah, so I went, ah, I went nuts. Everybody <laughs> laughed. I thought that was the end of it. Well, the office caught drift of it. And they gave me a call and I was like, I don't want to do Gilbert. And you're like, why not? And I said, I just won my title. Right. If I do Gilbert, I got to lose. And they're like, we'll call you back. And they called back and said, well, see, we got the beauty of the whole thing. I said, what's that? And they said, you're Russell Heavyweights. They can't win the title. <laughs> I said, let's do it. And the count began, 0-1, 0-2, 0-3. Yeah, it, was, it was great work. One thing I did like was you had one match with Triple H. I remember, I believe it was 98 or 99. I want to say 99. You actually hit some pretty good spears. I thought I was going to win. What are you talking about, man? Yeah, I thought that the too. The crowd was going nuts, man. They're like, ah, ah. And when I missed that last spear, they went, ah. Oh. <laughs> they shut right up, man. Yeah, like, because I know when it comes to the spear, you get hit with that. That's like 90% chance he you're done. He beat the hell out of me after that, too. <laughs> <laughs> he took that chair and just destroyed it on me. <laughs> yeah. So, but it was fun. It was fun. Triple H is definitely class act. Oh, that's great to hear. He deserves to be where he's at. That's for sure. That's great. Um, also, when creating the Gilbert character, did you ever feel or have any notion that it will cause issues, let's say, with Goldberg himself and how your relationship with him is? And there's a lot of issues with Goldberg himself. I didn't care. It wasn't meant to be mean to him. Right. You know, it was WWF versus WCW. So, of course, we're going to make fun of their top guy, who was him. 
It could have very easily been Bret Hart, could have been anybody, you know what I mean? Could have been Sting, could have been, <laughs> you know, Arn Anderson, huh, Lex Luger, any of them. A Sting imitation, that kind of sounds interesting, I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> So later on, when you made your 2017 return during like the Kevin Owens, no, the Chris Jericho party for Kevin Owens, how did that get set up for with that call? They called me and said, we need you. Okay. It was 2020. 2020. Oh, no, no. 2017 was Chris Jericho. Yeah, 2020 right. 2020 was uh, with uh, uh, Miz and Morrison. Right, during the pandemic. And with that, how would you describe the difference now with the era of wrestling compared to the Attitude Era? Sucks. <laughs> Attitude Era was what it was about, man. Uh, yeah, I remember I started up WWE in 89 and finished in 2020. And again, even with that, thank you for giving us so many years of great entertainment. I loved it, man. I loved it. What are you talking about? <laughs> I was a, I, I'm a fan who got to become a wrestler. And got to go up WWF and WWE and wrestle. The okay. biggest names in the business. I'm a happy man. <laughs> My dreams were fulfilled. You know what I mean? It's like the kid who plays baseball his whole life and wants to win the, you know, World Series. I did. Sitting right here. And, and nobody else, and a you lot of people I mean? can't say that. I ain't gonna lie to you that the night I won the belt, I went in Vince's office to thank him and I cried. I was at... That emotional of it, man. I've been wrestling my life, man. Nice. Yeah. Always has been since I was this big. <laughs> yeah. And one last thing before we end this, end this off. What would be your top five moments of your career? Yeah, winning my title, winning my title, winning my title, <laughs> winning my title. <laughs> winning my title. <laughs> Yeah, that, the match with Triple H was pretty cool because he was the heavyweight champion and I got to beat the crap out of him yeah. before he destroyed me. Yeah, yeah, you hit him with a good with three or four spears and yeah. they look devastating too. Well, he told me, he said, man, when you hit him, hit him. Yeah. He said, I'm a lot bigger than you, don't worry about it. <laughs> we got in the back, he said, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, tackle, <don't> you? <laughs> so I told you I played semi-pro. Yeah, he learned the hard way. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah, it was a blast. I mean, you know, I figured that one, um, oh, shoot, so many. I mean, Taker, I had a million matches with The Undertaker. I love him. Uh, you know, just Steiners, Head Shrinkers, I, you know, the Bushwhackers. It's just so many times I wrestled it. I had so much fun, you know what I mean? It was a blast back then. Yeah. Now it's too much like work. <laughs> it is, man. I noticed the boys now, now that they know what wrestling is, the fans know what wrestling is, the boys are killing themselves. I mean, before I could I could go on the road, me and my partner go on the road against the head shrinkers and wrestle nine months straight every night. Never get hurt. Now, if you can go 30 days without getting hurt, you're really good. Yeah. 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 So you would say they're not as endur endurable as they were back then now? No, if you want to know the truth, back then they didn't know it was fake, only we did. Right. Now they know it's fake, so now they're trying to make it real. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. And that's how they're killing each other. They don't know how to, they don't know how to. They know how to flip and flop, but they really don't know how to work. <laughs> Tell a story. Yeah, when's the last time you saw a match where they told a story? I mean, you can make WWE, a... WWE, I gotta say, WWE's gotten back into it. Yeah, I was gonna they're, say... They're back in, they're starting to go back into old school, I gotta admit that, but... I mean, no. look at everywhere else, they just go out there, they flip-flop, 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 there's no story told, there's nothing going on. You know? Yeah, but things seem to be going in a good direction as of late in terms of well, mainly the bloodline. Doing good. They got what thirty-five straight sellouts. Where is it? And AEW's got thirty-five straight two thousand people in the building. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's bad, man. They got some of the best talents. You can't do nothing. Yeah, because they're letting the boys' egos run wild. Okay. But but again, thank you so much for my giving pleasure, us your time. Thank, my you. Pleasure. thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You too.